His name is John Kieran. He's an energy consultant and has worked at Hydro One as director of corporate development. And he's been involved in politics for decades. His very first job was as a speechwriter for the Bill Davis government 37 years ago. Let me tell you the first rule of canvassing mm -hmm. never walk on the lawn. Right. Okay. <laughs> Never you learned, did you learn that the hard way? <laughs> no, no, but my first campaign was with uh, David Crombie in 1972. Really? So, yeah, I've always been a, a political person, and uh, my, um, my models of who I'd like to be politically are Bill Davis and David Crombie. I'm going to grill you on some issues now. Okay. You were a Hydro One executive, so let's start with Hydro One. Would you fire the $6 million man, as Doug Ford says he would do, and would you buy back the Hydro One shares? Firing the CEO is difficult, but Doug is right, it can be done. You have to do it through the board. Is it I, wise to do it? It is definitely wise to do it, and for a couple of reasons. One, what was the first thing that the CEO of Hydro One did after Kathleen Wynne vetted him in the position? Uh, number one, his salary went from four and a half to six and a half million dollars. Number two, he, went, he bought a uh, energy company mm -hmm. on the west coast of the United States that owns a coal fire generating station in Montana that's one of the largest single source emitters in North America. So when I hear Kathleen congratulating herself about taking us out of coal, I hope people in Ontario realize that through Hydro One, we're back in the coal business in Ontario. Would you buy back the shares the way Andrea Horvath says she would do? Where, do, where, does, where do you stand on that? I, Doug has not answered that question. I don't own any, any shares. I mm -hmm. think it's something that we're going to have to consult with the experts. Hi, I'm Hi. John Kieran. I just wanted to come by and say hello. One thing I hear from a lot of people is that uh, how is your party going to balance the budget? Doug Ford simply says efficiencies. How is the budget going to be balanced? What are efficiencies? The Auditor General did a sample three months ago of 14 programs and found a billion dollars easily saved. I look at the uh, eight billion dollars or so spent on e-health, two billion on smart meters, four billion on interest for the so-called fair hydro plan. Now, I also asked John Kieran what his first goal would be if he was elected, and he said stopping the poisonous relationship between the government and doctors and nurses. And I also asked him about the controversy surrounding uh, PC nominations, how some are on investigation, there are allegations that some were rigged. And he said, quote, every party has candidates that make missteps. Perhaps our party is no different than the other two. Now, a typical Liberal candidate, Peter Milchin, will be stepping in for Kathleen Wynne at the debate this evening. And coming up, though, we will be joined by the NDP candidate live, and you will be able to get to know her. And I am live at Don Valley West. This is Kathleen Wynne's riding, and here at this arena this evening will be an all-candidates debate. Kathleen Wynne will not be here. Her opponents will be, and polls suggest she actually may lose her seat to the PC candidate, but I'm joined here now by the NDP candidate, Amara Possian. Hi. Welcome. Uh, tell me, you were only nominated a short time ago. Uh, why did it take so late for you to get the nomination, and, and what kind of challenges does that prove? So it actually wasn't on my radar to run this year, um, but when Doug Ford was elected as the leader of the of the PCs, I, I asked myself what I could do to stop um, the you know the devastating consequences of his agenda, um, and I uh, noticed that there was an opportunity right here in my home riding uh, to um, both stop stop the conservative agenda, but also put forward a um, vision for the future that I think really brings change for the better. Uh, and, and yeah, I'm really excited to be here in my home community. What's your background in politics? Tomorrow. So I've tried to make change in a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, I've done some um, work directly meeting with ministers. I've brought stakeholders together from very different backgrounds to craft, you know, sustainability strategies for universities. Um, I've organized uh, hundreds of thousands of people around um, a number of issues that matter to them, uh, both in, in around advocacy but also around elections. Um, and this is the first time that I'm engaging this directly in in politics because I think the stakes are really high this year. What do you think about the platform? Form. I mean, Andrea Horvath is, some polls suggest, perhaps inching just above Doug Ford. Uh, she is t facing increased scrutiny, including a $1.4 billion math mistake on, on the platform. Uh, what do you have to say about that? 
So I would actually love to see the Conservatives platform because we all we know about it is that Doug Ford is promising cuts, um, cuts to uh, six billion dollars of cuts to our schools, uh, to health care, and I'm very proud of our platform uh, because it is really um, a, a platform that is showing us a progressive vision for the future. Um, you know, change for the better by investing in health care, pharma care for everyone, dental care for everyone. Um, I grew up in the riding. I've spent a lot of time in Sunnybrook Hospital uh, with my grandmother. You know, waiting in hallways, um, and it was absolutely heartbreaking to, to see that. And, and I'd like to change that. Amara, thank you very much for joining us. Good luck in the debate.